very good morning to you all and this is uh, a now uh, takers uh, irr farm and we are very uh, thankful to our pjt still we describe that at their ngs and activities in the city they have provided us this uh, facility uh, area that's why more than 8 to 9 these are the paddy fields with uh, variable applications of hr కోకోనట్ అస్ ఇది చేయడం కష్టమే కదా సార్ మరి అలాగ దొరుకుతుంది రెడ్యూస్ చేస్తారు కదా యూరియా తగ్గించుకుంటా బయచారు పెంచుతారు మీరు చూడండి అది ఆల్రెడీ ఫ్లవరింగ్ వచ్చింది అక్కడ చూడండి అది మళ్ళీ కంట్రోల్ అది కంట్రోల్ కి దానికి డిఫరెన్స్ వచ్చింది చూడండి ఫ్లవరింగ్ ఆటోమేటికలీ what they are doing this somebody was telling their own club chlorophyll meter na uh, what you can do and power so this is i think dsr as a dsr you can put it to address on the 14 of 70 sustainable development goals so that's why i think the peter i think where it will reduce water where it will reduce climate uh, i think we can get some sense so we are also another way we are also helping to uh, climate resilience also by dsr we can integrate other unit cells uh, these are the our new initiatives like earlier we were working with uh, um, awd but uh, i think now our remote uh, i would be said awd we are working and we are something that in uh, you all are working towards a common goal to reduce uh, 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 the wind on the river on mic and to promote sustainable rice cultivation which we are for working uh one of the important uh, uh, thing what we need to realize is that biochar we always see it as a inorganic or organic entity actually we should see it as a living entity just like soil based on my limited understanding and uh, based on my online discussions in tesada kriti garu and others uh, understand that biochar has got many ramifications all are positive first is it uh, facilitates slow release of nutrients and uh, second thing is uh, the lot more things which you can package along with biochar and then deliver it for the benefit of rice crop while well, listening my discussion with regard to rice crop on which uh, we are we are uh, here uh, there are uh, for example my colleague uh, sin soy science and agronomy they are uh, already started an experiment wherein they will be delivering micronutrient mixtures Uh, particularly in nano form and also in uh, conventional granular form uh, through biochar and they are also having another experiment where they are trying to deliver biofertilizers or biostimulants through biochar it's a case of wing wing in a uh, situation wherein uh, uh, we can get the benefits which already has been very well documented out of uh, <coughs> use of biochar in rice cultivation particularly when rice cultivation is shifting to from flooded paddy to alternate wetting and dry and also direct seeded rice i believe that the benefits of application of biochar will increase manifold and uh, uh, we are uh, validating different sources of biochar uh, in terms of you prefer like various uh, uh, biomass which we are we are trying to validate and then you place them uh, to see which biochar is more efficient in terms of promoting uh, rice cultivation and uh, i personally believe that uh, uh, it should be a common practice in terms of just like we recommend uh, every alternate season uh, 10 to 12 uh, tons of farm your manure per hectare uh, same should be the practice with regard to uh, biochar application also and uh, this is particularly true in case of rice that a lot of biomass is actually wasted or burnt not here in south india but in uh, in north and then particularly northwestern india wherein uh, we waste lot of biomass uh, that is generated out of rice which can be channelized for biochar production and can benefit not only rice crop 
but also the subsequent crop. And I'm sure that biochar should form a, a component of natural farming. And the mind is that when we be executing our work with RYESS, uh, we should ensure that uh, uh, at least to those farmers who are ready to listen to us, we can bring them here, demonstrate uh, how to uh, prepare uh, biochar and uh, pack it with uh, micronutrients. Uh, or it may like say organic uh, and, bio and, and also biofertilizers or whatever uh, we can deliver it in an organic uh, manner uh, we need to uh, do it of course there is a uh, uh, lot of overlap between organic farming natural farming but whatever may be uh, the definitions I believe that application of biochar is going to improve rights of productivity and also improve most importantly soil health this is particularly important uh, in case of uh, uh, rice because at least 40% of rice area, particularly under irrigated rice, the soils are uh, back to worse, are being classified back to worse. And I believe that application of biochar will directly or indirectly enhance the soil organic carbon content and also improve the soil health by promoting growth of microbes, mycorrhiza and other organisms and also include the porosity so that uh, the overall physical uh, and also chemical and then biological health of soil is certainly bound to improve. And with this brief remarks, we are, uh, you need to understand that I'm basically a breeder come molecular biologist. I'm trying to understand uh, the real uh, uh, benefits of uh, biochar. And uh, from my part, what we are going to do is, in collaboration with our microbiology department, we are also going to measure uh, uh, whether uh, in a small scale because we cannot do it uh, in several farmers feed at least in our research farm and then probably in the next uh, season or next year we are going to measure the actual uh, change in the soil micro profile uh, through uh, metagenomics tools and there are some very good tools are available wherein the whole soil can be collected based on analysis of uh, uh, DNA of the soil we can identify which organisms are abundant, uh, relative abundance of various organisms also we can uh, do it. And this has been very well demonstrated through inorganic uh, rice cultivation. It has clearly shown that uh, the soil microbial profile changes uh, in organic rice cultivation. We also want to do similar studies with regard to uh, 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 improvement in uh, beneficial microbial profile in the soil. My colleague Dr. Bandapa is here and he'll be taking care of those experiments along with his colleagues in soil science. Parallelly, agronomy is also uh, very actively working on uh, biochar, its variants and the benefits it may accrue not only for irrigated rice but also for aerobic rice and most importantly direct seeded rice for which we are uh, sitting here. And uh, we need to understand that direct seeded rice is not a single definition. There are various ways by which direct seeded rice uh, the cultivation is being done. One is of course wet and dry, that the classification is there. But in large areas of coastal Andhra and some part of Telangana, they adopt a mixed system wherein seeding will be done under dry conditions. Following all uh, further operations will be done like a typical transplanted party, but with a reduced water application. So uh, there is no one a single common definition of direct seeded rice. It's all to be customized. And uh, we need to find uh, uh, local solutions, working on local resources and uh, local technologies and try to integrate it with uh, international developments and then try to find out durable solutions which promote towards sustainable rice cultivation. I believe biochar should be part of the solution uh, for uh, durable uh, and sustainable rice cultivation. Uh, good sir that uh, this institute is already into this biochar adaptation. I am very happy because considering all other agriculture uh, various branches around even university uh, this uh, institute is leading already the biochar. And the rice and cotton these are very important even considering this geographical area of Kalanana and the Pradesh near. So, uh, all the challenges that are expressed already, I don't want to repeat, but coming down to the technical implementation part, I think we should have the right pyrosis unit and uh, what can be adopted even by the farmer. It is not the lacks of rupees of units, 
second thing is the characterization of rhesus biota or the straw biota second thing is integrating the let us say we have cotton areas nearby even the biota from cotton straw see far better than our rhesus second thing is zoning of your areas whether it is acidic soils or alkaline soils because the kind of ash tanking that comes in our pyrolysis unit is going to damage further and the soil organic carbon is a broader term within that biochar is one bigger thing in its presence it will increase soil organic carbon so this fundamental aspect even right from your microbiology and other things they are very very important and especially i cannot say natural farming or organic farming but sustainable agriculture is a broader term doubling the income doubling the production is the challenge before us as well as reducing the water as you already said sir by 50% if we can reduce climate change is bringing enough water i don't think we don't require much irrigation project as of now if we can judiciously use this water so starting my experience with this i started in you know, a mabuna around 2005 6 the first trial with birds are in paddy then i was leading in voluntary all of this climate or project then i implemented both in on the person telangana before they come so i had done in the jangam area with uh, many ten for farmers so uh, this trials so everywhere we found the result then what is the delay the problem is the carbon credit is one incentive as methaji already mentioned that will incentivize the farmers to adopt otherwise the cost of charcoal prices is growing like anything we can't even imagine good quality retail price should be rupees second and there is so much competition around from all other uh, say biofuels or you say the charcoal based green coal many other thing even for combustion also so to make it sustain definitely i feel rice husk is the best bet first priority second is rice straw because rice straw handling that or even putting in a pyrolysis unit or even as a by product even after using the energy we have lots of scope here i think here is exclusively you should have this kind of uh, specialization of units types of units right from the simplest method i can train a farmer even with a max box how to produce a rice of biochar even you can go for testing that's good quality but apart from that even 1000 rupees from so i have technology or 1 lakh also technology then why a farmer should go for such high technology the sustainability is the issue adaptation is the bigger issue so that will we can be associated such some progressive biochar society we have lots of experts here everybody coming from different disciplines so thank you very much thank you sign get well nikol hidwar